to the US now, which is facing a national security emergency. Thousands of people are being killed on roads, in schools, in shopping malls, not at the hands of Al-Qaeda or ISIS terrorists, but at the hands of fellow Americans, empowered by their law to carry assault weapons. Three weeks, 40 mass shootings and counting, the latest being in the Washington state. Welcome to America in 2023. Ohio, Florida, North Carolina, Texas, Utah, California, and all the other states marked in the red in this map have witnessed mass shootings in the month of January, this month. Gun terror in the U.S. is now daily news. More than 45,000 people died due to gun-related injuries in 2020. For the last two years, they don't have complete data, but the trajectory is quite clear. Mass shootings have risen steadily since 2014 and sharply since 2020. Fun fact, the U.S. is the only country in the world which has more guns than people. And these are civilian guns that we're talking about not the military or the police, more civilian guns than civilians. They have 120 guns for every 100 people. And they have a law that allows all of this. It's called the Second Amendment of the US Constitution. The Second Amendment. It gives every American the right to carry arms. And around a third of America's adults say they carry arms. You see, guns are an emotive issue in the US. And gun control a very contentious subject. Here's a familiar script. A mass shooting takes place, horror, shock, tears, and sound bites by politicians, both Republicans and Democrats. They condemn the incident, they offer their thoughts and prayers, and they move on until the next shooting. Why don't they stop this? After all, American leaders launch operations to fight terror in far-flung lands. Why don't they fight gun terror at home? Because politics and gun lobbies and big money connect the dots. After every mass shooting, political football begins. This month, after the killings in California, President Joe Biden spoke. He called, he called on the Congress to ban assault weapons. Yesterday, uh, uh, my buddy Diane Feinstein introduced her Senate uh, uh, um, weapon, assault weapons ban. I am asking you all to send that to my desk as quickly as you can. And this is where the big divide lies. Republicans believe the right to own a gun is a fundamental right. But the existence of evil in our world is not a reason to disarm law-abiding citizens who know how to use their weapon and can protect a lot of people. The existence of evil is one of the very best reasons to arm law-abiding citizens. So Republicans resist and Democrats pass the buck. The fact is the president can use emergency powers to push for reform. For instance, he can declare gun violence a public health emergency. And this is an emergency. Such a declaration of a public health emergency would then give him additional statutory powers. So to say that his hands are tied does not cut it anymore. In June last year, a new law was signed. It had bipartisan support meaning leaders from both sides, both parties, backed this law. It was hailed as the most significant gun legislation in three decades in America. It was, in fact, a compromise law. And it hasn't fixed very much. More than 400 shootings have taken place since the law was passed. More than 450 deaths have been reported since this law was passed. Again, why hasn't the U.S. been able to fix this? When they want to bomb another country, they don't even wait for a United Nations resolution. When they want to fight dictators or bring democracy or liberate people from the shackles of tyrants, they go to any lengths and use all their might. Why can't they liberate their own people from gun terror? Because American lawmakers are losing to the NRA, the National Rifle Association. It is the largest gun owners' group in the US and not surprisingly, it lobbies against gun control laws. It doesn't want gun control. Another fun fact. When this same association invited former President Donald Trump to speak at their annual leadership forum last year, guess what they banned? Guns. That conference was held in Houston, and it was held just days after a mass shooting at an elementary school in Texas. You know how many children died there? 
19 plus 2 teachers, 19 children shot dead in a school. It is supposed to be the safest place for a child after home in the US, evidently not. In American schools, shootings and guns have become par for the course. And the National Rifle Association shoots down any attempts to fix this. Just how powerful is this group? It was founded in 1871 by two Civil War veterans. In a few decades, it began influencing government policies. It started funding lawmakers. The NRA spends around $3 million every year just to influence gun policy in 2020. It spent around $250 million on lobbying and related activities. So you get the picture. Money talks as guns kill. The NRA's justification defies logic. It says guns make America safe. The fact is the US is the only country in the world where you're more likely to be killed by a teenager than a terrorist. While it's busy posturing as a defender of human rights in the world, it has failed miserably to protect innocent lives at home. More than 6,000 children were either killed or injured by guns in 2022. 6,000 children, the youngest victim was a five month old shot dead at five months. And this mayhem will not stop because America's leaders are busy looking away and trying to tell other countries what they must fix.